Hi everyone, welcome. I'm over here at my computer and like we do sometimes I've got my spreadsheet open tracking spreadsheet to show you what I've got in mind for today. So sometimes not only is my tracking spreadsheet sort of a historical record of what's been in the past, you can see over here today's date is reflected in this column here as well as some future dates to kind of put some future check boxes out into the future where I can give myself credit for getting that job done at some point in the future if I do it. And this kind of enables me to sort of schedule stuff in advance, think through what needs my attention, what can wait longer. And right now, since I'm in the middle of uh, winter, it does seem like most systems can probably just wait because like here too, two days ago, a system that was now 12 days since it was last fed, so it was 10 days ago that it had been fed, I went in there and I was adding worms to it after hauling out the, the associated cocoon nursery. All I did was add moisture. There was plenty of leftovers after 10 days there. I think there was another one here too, right? So here too I did another haul out of a cocoon nursery, winding that one down as well. Adding worms to the associated system five days ago, there too, I only added worms because I had a chance then to check out the system after it had also um, gone 10 days without any feedings. And it, it didn't need any food either, and it kind of told me I could wait on that one as well. So the only other system that kind of goes quite a way back now, um, in terms of when it was last fed, is, is what we kind of treat as my original red wiggler population over here. Uh, after two weeks, you know, I'm not sure. Does it need a feeding? It's, um, it's now already had 14 feedings, and a lot of times I, I push the feedings up to 15 or more in a bin, but... You know, there's nothing that says I have to. And we could maybe even start thinking about reclassifying that point in time two weeks ago as perhaps um, the actual end of composting phase and perhaps sort of backdate the start of the foraging phase, you know. Um, so I was going to go in there with the potential of that being the outcome today. I, I don't know for sure. Like I said, it's winter time seems to slow the activity down in all my systems so I don't want to force food into there if it's um, still good to go with what it got 14 days ago and maybe even some of the leftovers from prior then maybe we'll just decide at this point that that was the last feeding and at this point we reclassify its ongoing um, activity as just foraging so I'm gonna head down there now and we're gonna check out how that system is doing so let's regroup down in the basement in my wormery and I gotta admit, I, I do uh, wish that we can uh, add food because I've got stuff piling up. I was at my mom's yesterday shoveling some snow and in return I got a whole bunch of kitchen scraps for the worms. There was potato peels, there were chunks of cabbage and cauliflower and geez, I don't even remember. It's one thing after the other. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> This piece of paper has really seen better days, that's for sure. You know, these coffee filters are usually pretty tough, you know. They're designed to be, you know, soaking wet when they're in use. Keep the water flowing through, but the coffee needs to stay inside. But it does seem like over time this paper has deteriorated to the point where it can not even hold up to <laughs> its own weight anymore. I think we're going to blend it into the material and turn it into worm food at this point. So on the topic of worm food, let's check out some of the foods that they've been given recently. Here's a piece of a, a banana stem or banana peel stem. A little bit of food chunk out on the surface. It's fortunate that things are nice and damp right up here on the surface underneath that bubble wrap that was covering things up. You can see there's like a pretty good coating of um, freshly deposited castings right out here on the top. Nice moisture level. I think I'm already starting to see some leftovers, you know, right here. It looks like a little chunk of something. I've definitely got a, I think this might actually be the kind of the inner core we saw out there before of another banana stem. But that one's really much further along, it seems. I think the best thing we could do in here, I'm already kind of anticipating that we're going to see leftovers. The last time we fed, though, there was an interesting item. I'm definitely interested in seeing how it looks two weeks later, if there's still any sign of it. There was sort of this center core 
of a um, head of cabbage, so all the leaves have been peeled off or cut off. So there was that middle stem portion around which all the leaves are formed, and it was just an interesting piece. We plopped right down into the middle. And I was wondering what the worms thought of it. I, I had a feeling that it would be a real popular item. And I think that's what we're seeing right here in the middle. It was kind of a... Yeah, I can, I can sense the cabbage odor. <laughs> Usually when you got a, a larger mass of something, then it'll, it'll stay intact and the worms will work their way inwards around it and into it. But the middle core of it could remain unexposed to break down for a while. And that's what we've got going on here. I'm a little bit surprised to see after two weeks still this much of it remaining. The middle part of it still feels a little bit hard. But it does seem like the outer part of it has turned to mush and is being consumed. Kicking off moisture in the process too, so there's a good amount of moisture down here in the bottom. Uh, there were potatoes, potato peels, I guess. So we've got a couple banana stems, some coffee filter paper. I guess maybe we'll start making a little collection of leftovers. And if we decide that this is the kind of... Um, official designation of the system's current status as being foraging versus ongoing composting and I'm starting to get the feeling that that's what I'm going to end up doing here but then uh, we'll just kind of collect up all the food size it up so we can at least you know gauge where things stand this, this goes back a few feedings I remember checking in on this a number of times it almost seems like that same worm is in that same spot burrowed through could it be that he got himself stuck and he's been there for weeks? I wonder if it's the same worm. Seems so unlikely, but who knows? You never know what the heck happens in the life of worms. This looks like a piece of banana peel. Another banana stem. This one's pretty intact. This one must have gone in pretty recently. Alright, yeah, there's, ooh, there's some worms hanging out down here too. That's cool. I love this population. I don't know why. It's, it's so cool to see, you know a mound of worms this big in this population back when this system was still just starting out I remember picking through this container for a while before we would even encounter one little worm you know oh we found one it was so exciting this um, population it's remarkable how it's um, bounced back and taken advantage of the uh, space that it was given to grow into it was my only um, real try at starting out a population with an extremely small number of worms one of these days I should compile all the videos that made up the life of this population into a playlist. That's the one thing that I think is really cool on the other video channels where the topic is the same as this, the worm channels where they sort of um, link all the uh, different videos that pertain to any one given system into a playlist so you can kind of just sit there and binge watch an entire <laughs> um, bins start to finish one video after the other and actually observe its breakdown. So that's something I should really commit to doing one of these days. A lot of moisture down low. I'm just thinking it would have been nice if we could have kind of collected some of the more dry stuff out on the surface. Although, I, I gotta tell you, that piece of bubble wrap, even though it doesn't go edge to edge, perhaps it's just the fact that it's castings and that's the way castings are, but besides a little tiny bit of dry on the very top surface, there's no there's no dry, dryness issue in here whatsoever. Some people might say that the moisture level seems a bit high, but the worms don't seem to mind. I'm sure that if I were to give this stuff a squeeze, it would emit some moisture. That's kind of the squeeze test or sponge test or whatever it's called, which I don't even know if I've ever done, ever. <laughs> I would just try to gauge the moisture level of stuff by looking at it. All right. What's going on here? Did I just rummage through all of our leftovers collection? I think I did. I'm such an absent-minded worm keeper. Can't seem to stay focused. Uh, whatever. Maybe it is just for the best that we blend in the foods. We had a chance to size up how much there was of it. And it did seem to me like if it was not in a pile, if it was sort of uh, incorporated throughout the bin, that it would all uh, just somehow get a better chance at breaking down. I mean, it is always fun to come back into a worm bin and go back to the spot where you knew there would been there'd been feedings applied and see a whole bunch of worms hanging out there. But um, 
it seems like in a, a system like this, there's worms everywhere. So we're going to see worms all over the place. It, uh, it almost seems like, did I somehow blend in that, that stem of cabbage? Oh, here it is. <laughs> it seemed just too large to somehow get accidentally blended in. Everything else does seem like it blended in pretty nicely. All those potato peels that were put in here at the same time as this two weeks ago, for the most part, seem to have been eaten. So this bin, fortunately, has a pretty good appetite, but um, it's it's um, it's just taking a little bit longer, you know. It, it seems to do quite well, but with um, e even with its capability being pretty good, it does seem like it's um, requiring a little extra time to finish. So I'm going to take this sort of interesting object and keep it in the middle. I don't think there was anything else notable other than that sort of stem of cabbage, which after two weeks, I would say probably more than half of it's gone, but for half of it to still be there is pretty interesting. Yeah, worms throughout, all kinds of... Well, we didn't really check this side. It might make good sense to really make sure that we don't have any excess moisture or excess dryness. It did, did seem like it's a little bit more crumbly over here. Perhaps a little bit more dry wouldn't hurt to mix in some more damp stuff, but I think we've more or less spread the moisture out pretty evenly. I thought that we might end up needing to add moisture, because a lot of my systems do seem to have the moisture sucked out of them by the dry air. Maybe that's just because they're younger systems and the material that they're made up of is not castings yet. It's just stuff that, you know, loses its moisture pretty readily in dry conditions. But here in a system that's mainly castings, it seems like we're almost too wet but I'm going to let that remain as is so that the worms feel really comfortable going into all reaches of the container to work down all the remaining bits of uh, leftover food and bedding. And at this point, I'm updating my records to say that this has, in fact, been foraging now for the past two weeks and will continue until such a time that we feel like all this stuff's been broken down to the point where we can start thinking about getting them uh, rounded up and relocated into a new home. So foraging it is. Let's get this plastic covering back on. I mean, previously we had that piece of um, coffee filter indicating to us where we last fed. But at this point, the food's been spread about a little bit. We know that there's still that core of the cabbage right in the middle if we wanted to check in on it, but nothing else is going to be distinguishable as what it used to be other than maybe a, a banana peel stem or something here or there. But um, I'm curious to see how long it's going to take for this thing to, you know, get to the finish line considering the slowdown of the composting activity and everything. So um, maybe we'll give it another couple of weeks before we check in and I think it'll j just be fine. So that's it for today's video. I'm going to uh, get myself cleaned up and get everything put away, but I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's boring. Before I go though really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right. Have a great day. Thanks everyone for watching.